now we come to that part of the evening for a lovely love story. That of Mr. Ebenezer Bishop. Ebenezer Bishop grew up on a homestead in Greenwich in 1784 to a father named Timothy who had married once before. Now resulting from these two marriages were 15 children and Fred Ebenezer's 13 older siblings, he grew to manhood, absorbing and learning everything he possibly could to help him become the colorful and charismatic character he was claimed to have been. Yet despite his amazing reputation in the community, being an excellent marksman in the militia and a very intelligent farmer, only one photograph of him was ever known to have existed, that of a daguerreotype. Look it up on Wiki. <laughs> However, the long of old spinster, who, thinking that there's a fleck of dust on his nose, proceeded to clean the image. Cleaned it so much so that she removed the face from the tin back. However, sometimes photographs can be replaced with words. For this man did something so remarkable, so outstanding, that it's worthy of remembrance prose. Four miles across from shore to shore, the minus channel malls, the funny tide and narrow space between the rocky walls. Twelve miles an hour, the fungy flood surges on and on between the majestic palisades of Split and Blomidon. Twelve miles south on a homestead, and very much alive, Ebenezer Bishop dwelt, a man of twenty-five. On the other shore, in Parsboro, with raging tides between, and Lewis lived, a dainty maid whose years were yet eighteen. She ruled in Ebenezer's heart, but off his courage failed. A Parsboro man might win the girl while winter's month prevailed. When the tide was full, the basin froze, three feet in depth or more. The ice sheet over the inbound sound stretched from shore to shore. But with each ebb, the flows broke up, the ice cakes floating free. And with the minus channels ripped, rushed them off to sea. Three hundred miles, the churl wrote, passed in dangerous ways. A walk like that through snow like that might cost this man some days. Each tedious week that passed brought sharper pangs to rack this hapless man, until at last, his frantic heart, it devised a frantic plan. It was January, 1809, when Ebenezer asked his father for a few days off his normal farm duties to go visit his friend Nathaniel in Scotts Bay. Upon his arrival, he told his friend his love-struck plan to cross the four-mile ice-covered waters. Unable to talk his friend out of this, Nathaniel helped Ebenezer down to the water's edge the next morning at slack tide, when, for a brief amount of time, the tide is relatively motionless. Danger alert every step. Ice cakes were pancaked precariously on top of each other. Dirty red sea water was seeping up between some of the thin ice, and light dusting of snow had covered all of the ice joinings. At one point, Ebenezer felt the ice give way beneath him, so he flung himself face down to distribute the weight, but with a notched board he was carrying for safety, flung it into some strong ice, and was able to pull himself to safety. It was late in the afternoon by the time Ebenezer made it to the other side and walked the remaining miles to Parsboro where Anne was preparing that night's supper. Oblivious to his own appearance or the many family members she had in the kitchen with her, Ebenezer walked in, held in his hands, and he asked her to marry. The brave deserved and won the fair, so worthy he was found. Her parents went the lad a horse to take him back the long way around. A lover so impetuous was far too good to chance a second time of it, upon the ice across the tide's expanse. Eight months later, he returned my boat to reclaim his worthy bride. Nine forty years she lived with him in Greenwich by his side. Now they had quite the family, they raised many children, but one of the most remembered of all of these children was that of the name Leander Bishop. The lad grew mighty in the years, at last he came to be. Acadius, first graduate in 1843. A surgeon, he became in time and served with hand and brain in the bloody Civil War and all its wild campaign. When questioned how he kept so cool, one answer would suffice. He said he got it from his dad, who braided the minus ice. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Watson, your <laughs>